842, Raw Mike Richards on News Talk, Saga 960. We are talking about the ski and snowboard show. It is here in Mississauga at the International Center this weekend, uh, starting tomorrow. Uh, Aaron Milzinski is going to join us in a second, uh, you know, going back to Vancouver, Sochi, uh, Pyeongchang, Beijing. And, and I have to tell you, so as Aaron, as you join me here this morning, I have to tell you, I love our ski team, our national team girls. I go back, I'm, I look at uh, the, 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 the women and the families, you know, that have been part of this program because you end up becoming part of that family and the stemmels, which uh, I'm close with, uh, when I go by Brian, I, I I put my hand through my hair to show him all the hair I still have. He goes, what a dick you are. No, no, beautiful hair. Lisa Savage Harvey, another uh, big favorite of mine. And I'm so happy that you're joining us here this morning because I just uh, think the world of of your team, uh, it's the program itself going all the way back to the crazy Canucks and, you know, great talks with Jungle Jim. Like, it's just, it is uh, amazing what has been achieved in this country and you're a huge part of it. So I'm thrilled that you're joining us here this morning. Thank you. I'm excited. Well, and Thornbury too, come on. That's like yeah. the greatest place in the world. I mean, between that and Meaford, there, there's a bakery. Do you know the bakery? I mean, it's, it's, I think, is it just I do. The, the butter tarts? I acted like a freak when I went in there. I, I, I walked in, they knew they were in trouble. They're like, Oh my God, what's wrong with this guy? I'm like, your butter tarts. <laughs> How many? All can of I, them. I, yeah, it's just. <laughs> I'll it buy is you a, out. <laughs> Georgian Peaks and Craig Leith and that whole area up there. Maybe, honestly, Aaron, one of the most beautiful places I think in Ontario to live. I agree. I agree. And the people. The people uh, are amazing and make it more beautiful. Well, and of course, we're talking about uh, a, a show that's into its 50th year. And, yeah. and, and people are like, well, uh, what's it? Well, kind of COVID remember remember that COVID-19 so that's a, a, well, a couple of years that it hasn't been on but if if you're looking for well almost anything I mean you've got all those vendors there's there's equipment there's information there's like you know trips it's it's really uh if you're into skiing or just starting that's the other thing too you don't have to be you know some real savvy vet to, to enjoy it you can you can get a lot of information if you just want to learn about for instance snowboarding yeah, exactly. It's like the one-stop shop for winter sports. I think the thing I'm most excited about is the ski swap. It's the largest in Canada. Um, and so if you're just getting started, you can get something a little bit cheaper. And if you've been in it for a while, you can, again, go in there and get something half price. And it's better for the environment as well. So I'm excited to check that out and also to plan my next adventure and check out some of the ski resorts across Canada. I actually haven't skied at that many across Canada. So I can head to the booths and kind of plan that next adventure a little bit. Well, they better be free. <laughs> I'm telling I'll look, I'll make the phone calls for you. If I can't get you, in you free, I can't get anyone free. Uh, you know, have you ever been to kicking horse? Are you familiar with kicking horse out in, in BC, that uh, particular resort in ski hill? I'm familiar and had a lot of their coffee, but I actually haven't <laughs> skied there, which is why, you know, I'm really excited to go to these booths and ask them the questions and then choose. I mean, we're converting a school bus into a camper and what I want to do is go to each of these resorts. So I'm excited at the ski show to go to these booths, check out the the ski and snowboard areas. Maybe I'll take up snowboarding now um, <laughs> and to check them out, but also to check out, I'm a bit of a gearhead a bit of a nerd. So I'm, I'm excited to check out all the gear. Well, see, here's the other thing too, in, in sort of learning a little bit about you, when you say you're going to convert a bus into some sort of, uh, you know, traveling vehicle, are you doing it yourself? Because you're like a handy person. You, 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 you're, didn't I see steel stamping and making stuff? Are you a bit of a inventor, you know, like Dr. Brown and back to the future? I definitely like DIY projects. I definitely like if I see something, I'm like, I bet I could make it. Um, so my partner and I bought this school bus. So yeah, we've been doing it ourselves. And um, but he does most of it. I'm really good at handing tools and I'm getting better at everything. But um, yeah, he's doing most of it. And it, it's coming along. So it's almost I think it'll be ready in time for ski and snowboard season. Well, I think you're one of these uh, individuals that is always sort of had high expectations for yourself and really not afraid to try new things because if someone said well where do our skiers come from i said well uh, uh brampton uh the, the hotbed of uh, the hotbed of skiing of course that's where our skiers come from you are from brampton so you're from the peel area how does someone from peel end up becoming 
like a four-time Olympian, uh, world championships. How does that happen for you? Yeah, you're giving away a little bit of my speech that I'll be <laughs> saying on, I guess, tomorrow um, on stage there. But I started skiing. My parents love to ski, um, but we don't have a huge ski le legacy like the Stemmels or Savage RVs or anything like that. They just love to ski. And so we started at the peaks. I would refuse to go inside because I loved it so much. So I'd fall asleep on the hill and my parents would carry me around for the rest of the day. And we would just make as many people do. We would just make the trek up to Collingwood each weekend and hit the icy slopes and look down over the Georgian Bay. Mm. Um, and I think that's why we create such great ski racers. I mean, Jack Crawford just got an Olympic medal. And I think it's because we race the ice and we do as many runs as we can in the day. It's pretty steep. And I mean, this garment has produced, as you said at the beginning, they have produced an amazing amount of Olympic athletes and not only Olympic athletes, like people on the top of the podium. Having worked out in uh, Calgary for uh, six and a half years, uh, then because, you know, they, they'd want to challenge me all the time. And they said, I thought you said there was something called Blue Mountain out there. Yeah. Mountain. <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> Well, to us, it seems like a mountain, you know, it, it, it's all dependent. And I said, that's the thing about, I think, when uh, Aaron, I look at those that 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 want to try skiing, there, there can be a little bit of an intimidation, you know, even if you're talking about Horseshoe Valley, you're Absolutely. Talking about, if you've never done it before, it's it can be intimidating. So considering, you know, you've been doing it since you were a kid and, and, and driving up to Collingwood, which a lot of people will do. What do you think are the key things for someone beginning? Now, let's just say it's someone 14, 15 years old, or, or maybe an adult. What are the most important things when you're first starting, you think, in terms of even, even gear for those that are listening to this this morning? We'll see the, this later on uh, today on, on Twitter and watch it. Uh, what are some good suggestions when you're first starting? Like some people, because just like golf. They'll go and buy the most expensive thing, the stuff that the pros are using. They'll get the biggest driver. And, and I don't really think that that's how you want to approach skiing. Yeah, and or anything, I think, because equipment's super important. But if you just want to try it, see if you like it and get out there, that's what you should do. Just get out there. And so if you buy some used gear or try a friend's or rent something, I really think that's the best way to go. I think people get a little bit caught up in um, what they need instead of just getting out there. Um, and as I'm going to say tomorrow, a welcome failure into your life. You know, of course, the chairlifts over a lot of the runs and you might fail, but welcome it because every time you fail, you learn something new. And I think people can be intimidated, but you're not going to be going as fast as Jack Crawford or someone at the Olympics on your first run. It's it's quite slow at the beginning. And so even if you fall over, it's scary, but it doesn't hurt that much at the beginning. And so I would also find comfort in other people doing it. We've had a 12% growth in snow sports in the last two years, even with all the closures. Mm. And I think people realize that it, it does help keep you mentally and physically healthy to get out there. And 97% of people want to continue doing it. So I think just get out there, try. And a big reason I'm going to the show and I'm there is that I want to share my love of skiing. Like I love it more than anything. I want to share that with people and I want to hear them, you know, yippee through the trees. And I want to hear them. I want to see their smile light up the smiles of others. So it really is this amazing family sport. You can go and have um, a hot chocolate between runs. You can go and warm up. And so it's, it's kind of this uh, sport that's fun with this lifestyle tied in. And again, in the winter, there's very few things that you can do outside and really enjoy it so why not get into a snow sport yeah i i agree uh that's a uh, great advice that's aaron Melzinski who's uh, joined us here this morning talking about the uh toronto ski and snowboard show once again they've been around a while this is like its 50th year it's at the international center uh starting tomorrow for the whole weekend and uh, as i said there's lots to see and do um i think it's as you mentioned beforehand the social aspect of it like for a family like it's, it's, it's a nice outing, you know, you're having a lot of fun. And I said, I've never done snowboarding, maybe because it, when they go by me, or if one goes by me, I hear that chatter. And I find them so irritating. I'm like, you, I swear, you know, the, that typical Irish guy, right? I'm, I'm, I'm skiing down the hill angry. And and and, <laughs> the, 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 and and I can hardly wait because then because I know that there's usually a beautiful après ski lounge or something like that in which I can walk around and lie about how good I am or my all these amazing accomplishments. But it is a very social thing. And it's a real family thing, isn't it? Like, it's a great it's a great idea for a family to go out 
and um and and sort of be be together in the outdoors you said because there's not a lot of things you can do that are like that yeah exactly your kids can learn you can put them into lessons you can go see your friends um you can go in for a coffee you can have lunch together and that's what my family did and i think it's why i loved it so much i mean my grandpa taught me how to ski and my parents wow. my mom was one of my biggest coaches and so and i think that's why the ski and snowboard show is so great because there are these family packages for tickets to even get in so they really make it family oriented but there's a tube ride and there's stuff for the gear heads and there's a ski swap and there's new gear and old gear and ski resorts. And so I really think that you can go in there and have fun with your family, hit up the tube ride and then get ready for the winter. Cause that's really what we're trying to do. Get ready for the winter, bring on the snow and, and be out there with our family and our friends, because I think that's why I fell in love with it. And now I stay in love because the feeling of skiing is like, power and freedom and it's it's really my creative outlet i'm not very creative and so it's the way i make art well i, I do have to ask too so when when you're when you're making your way through and, and, and you're on the national team and then you start uh, skiing internationally was there ever a moment when you're at the top of and when we're saying a mountain you know it's it's these these things are, are basically in the clouds they're, they're, i mean it's it must be remarkable what was what was that moment for you? Where was the place? What was the race when you're at the top or even in the trial runs, but when you're at the top and you're looking, and I'm sure it's giant slalom, where was that? What was that for you where you're like, well, this is, uh, I've arrived and this is the race. This is the place. Was there a moment like that for you? I mean, I think there are a couple. I think the first time I actually skied in Whistler, um, you know how the fog can roll in. Yeah. And I was like, I'm skiing in a cloud. I can taste it. I was maybe 13 <laughs> years old. And for me, that was really special. I think when it hit that I had made national team, like I had really made it was when I started my first World Cup and looked out over Aspen, actually. And it was super icy and the girls around me are so strong. But I think maybe when I said, you know, this is a lot as standing at the top of Solden, which is giant slalom. And it's honestly, it's a cliff. And, um, and some, I still, I look at pictures and I, I watch the race on the weekend. I'm like, I did that. Um, <laughs> so I think we all go through those moments where it's just like you take little steps and then all of a sudden you stand there and you're like, wow. And I tried to do that every race, look out at where I was and be really thankful of the people who got me there, but also that I got the opportunity to stand there and to go out and race. Of course, I was nervous, though. <laughs> yeah, I, I would think you would be a little bit nervous. Uh, it, it, so wonderful that you could uh, join us here this morning. As I said, uh, I think our national team members and uh, I, I say the same thing and people are sick of hearing it. But after every uh, Olympics and, you know, you see the success that we have with our, our, our women's programs and in all different uh, events. And I always think that the rest of the world must look and watch our women being interviewed and thinking, how, where, how do you get, <laughs> these women are unbelievable. They're always articulate. They're always a little kind of funny. Uh, you know, they're just lovely, wonderful people. And they represent our country so well that I usually lead, <laughs> Stem as in Brian, you always lead with the women, don't you? You always got to, I said, do you see them on camera? Do you see, see how they're funny? They talk well, they, they you know, they're interviewed. They're, they're, there's a humility. Like I've never, ever, I don't think, on any of our events had any feeling of, of a slight uh, arrogance about the achievements that our, our Canadian women have. It's just really remarkable, the kinds of uh, human beings that we have produced and, and the ski team being, you know, front and center of it. So uh, congratulations on what I think is a, a marvelous and a tremendous career. Uh, and they're saying we couldn't have a better person representing uh, the Toronto uh, ski and snowboard show. They're right on that one. And uh, it should be wonderful. So thank you so much for joining us. It's going to be a wonderful show. And uh, and best of luck with your uh, uh, bus renovations. And uh, make sure you get out to Kicking Horse. And But don't use my name because the, there, there might have been an incident there. And uh, I mean, they're not happy about it. <laughs> thank you. And I'll uh, keep your words close to my heart. That was really, really nice of you. And uh, hopefully I'll see you there as well. That would be wonderful. I would like that. Thanks so much, Aaron. Thank you. Have a great day.